Okay, we're good. All right, so let's begin with why it is that you decided to run for Iowa's 2nd Congressional District. Oh, people ask me that all the time. You know, they'll say, do you really want to do this? It's a lot of work, and it is a lot of work, but the reasons why are many. So I, you know, I grew up in Iowa. I grew up on a farm. My mom and dad were World War II veterans. Um, my dad came back from the war and started farming. My mom was in the nurses cadet corps in the military because they had a you know a shortage of nurses at the time and so um, she came back and she was the town doctor's nurse and still you know going back and forth to the farm and they worked really hard and um, they worried about the weather all the time I was sent out to do chores so I hate the cattle I pulled pigs I know this is going to sound gross but my hand was the smallest so I would go in and pull the last piglet out of a sow you know when they were farrowing so I did that um, learned to drive on a 4020 John Deere tractor and just learned what really hard work means and I took the money that I earned while I was detasseling corn and went to the University of Iowa where I studied journalism. No one in my family had been in television journalism. So my grandmother would ask me questions like, oh, will you be able to fix my TV? You know, I said, no, 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 not now. I'm going to be a journalist. And so I met my husband, Mark, at Iowa, and we got married and had two great kids. Um, I had a 30-year career in journalism, so it was in the same area where I'm running. So uh, wherever I go, I see somebody that I know or someone that I've interviewed, and so it's just been a very special time. Um, after journalism, I joined Four Oaks. It's a children's mental health center, so I worked there for a while. And while I was working there, I noticed that nobody was really saying the word children when uh, they were running for office or they were elected. And I thought, well, being in this environment, I see so much need here that has not being met. So when an opportunity came for me to run for office, I decided to jump in. They had asked me several times to run for office. I just wasn't ready. But I was for this Iowa Senate position. So I was a state senator for 10 years. I won uh, four races in a purple district. And um, after Iowa Senate, um, you know, I decided to uh, work on um, health care issues, um, commerce issues, economic development, veterans, agriculture. So I served on uh, several committees while I was in the state senate. What I want to do when I go to Washington is take that collective experience and help people with it. So I want to go to Washington to lower costs for families and really help families in a number of ways. Um, I want to protect Medicare and Social Security. You know, there's talk about sunsetting the programs or changing the programs in some way or reducing or cutting the programs. I don't want that to happen. I, you know, changes are okay, but not reducing or cutting. Um, and uh, I want to protect women's reproductive rights. I know that that's really a big issue now. It's been a big issue for me for a long time, especially in the state Senate. And maternal health care in the rural areas and mental health care in the rural areas. So you just... You guys are doing great. There's something on your shoulder there on your left shoulder. Right? Oh. Here, I'll grab it for you. Okay. Got it. There you go. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you, Marlon. Mm -hmm. So you just touched on this briefly and know you've said that you're the pro-choice candidate. So yes. what exactly is your stance when it comes to abortion? Yeah, I am the woman's choice. I protect women. Uh, I am the pro-choice candidate. Um, and here are the reasons why. Um, Ashley Hinson went to Washington and she co-sponsored a bill that outlaws abortion for the entire country. And with no exceptions for the life of the mother or for rape or for incest. And I don't stand for that. I, we really need to protect women and their health care choices. Government should not be involved in this decision. Ashley Hinson should not be involved in this decision. She shouldn't be the person who is determining what my reproductive rights are. She also uh, voted against access to contraceptives, and I do not agree with her stance on this. So is there a point within a pregnancy where you would no longer support abortion? I think that that's a woman's right to choose. We know that in the state of Iowa, there is no abortion for third trimester. It's illegal, but I don't know anyone who would want to do that in the third trimester. I know that uh, women's right to choose involves miscarriages, ectopic pregnancies, and we have to take a look at medical school. So people who want to go into OBGYN 
um, they're not going to be able to practice if abortion is outlawed because that isn't the entire story about women's reproductive rights if you're not studying that or providing services for that. And who will deliver babies if no doctor is going into OBGYN because of this? So I think there is a domino effect that happened. People aren't thinking through this. And I say I'm the pro-choice candidate and I will protect women's reproductive rights. Ashley Hinson voted against women in a number of ways. She voted against the Violence Against Women's Act. She voted against the ERA that women have tried to get through for years. She voted against equal pay for equal work. And that's not fair to women. So switching gears now to the economy, I know Iowans are feeling the impact, as are many across the country, <clears throat> from the gas pump to the grocery store of high cost. What can you do to help bring those prices down? Yeah, inflation is real. You know, I'm sure that you filled your gas tank up this morning. Uh, I did. And also, you know, at the grocery store, people are looking in their sacks and saying, is this all I get? Yeah, it's a problem. It really is a problem. I know that. I grew up on a farm. There were hard times and we struggled. And I feel that I can relate to other people who have done that. And so, you know, from there, what can we do to solve this issue? Well, the Biden administration has approved E15 for the rest of the country. So that has brought down gas prices slightly, especially in our area, and it's helped Iowa corn growers. You know, they're able to sell more ethanol. They're able to sell more corn to the ethanol plants. We have seen that uh, the Biden administration also uh, is releasing about a million barrels of oil a day in the uh, reserves that are on the Gulf Coast, and we need to drill. We need to keep drilling. We need to do it in a, a, a way that's uh, domestic. And the administration needs to stand up to OPEC to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, you're price gouging here. They presented a price gouging bill uh, in Congress, and that price gouging would prevent big oil from gouging us um, for, you know, at the pump. Ashley Henson voted against that bill. She is taking a lot of money from big oil, from lobbyists, and I don't agree with that. I know that there are a lot of solutions here, um, including, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, I know she'll criticize that, but inside that bill is insulin capped at 35, which is in effect now. Um, Medicare prices um, for um, to the $2,000 that's out-of-pocket cost for prescription drugs, um, that's capped at $2,000 a year. Um, we know that um, marketplace um, premiums where, you know, if you're in a small business and you need to buy an insurance policy, marketplace premiums are going to reduce. And we know that prescription drug prices are negotiated. That's going to save us more than $300 billion, and that goes toward the national debt, lowering the national debt. And those are all good things. Ashley Hinson voted against the Inflation Reduction Act as well. She called it a socialistic spending spree. I do not agree. I think these are great things for everyone, including if we could add to Medicare vision, dental, and hearing. That would be the cherry on top. And I know we've covered many stories on <clears throat> child care issues across the yes. state, whether that be the high cost for child care or simply finding a slot. What can be done to help when it comes to child care for working parents? Oh, yeah, we've worked on this for a long time because I think these two things are related, child care and the workforce shortage. So during COVID, a lot of people were bringing, you know, their kids were at home and maybe one person uh, quit their job to stay home with their children. So that really changed the course of childcare. We saw childcare centers close. ARPA, the American Rescue Plan, sent dollars to states to try to reinvigorate childcare so that people could go back to work. So it's all a stimulus to try to get people back to work, try to open daycare centers, and try to make sure our inflation is lower and our unemployment is lower and wages are up. So ARPA funds came through. Uh, they helped a lot of you know, childcare centers and some of that money is still flowing. Ashley Henson, again, didn't vote for ARPA. But yet I see her on photo shoots and she's with daycare centers and she is encouraging them to open, but she voted against the bill. The bottom line is she didn't vote for the money. And I wanna ask you about safety in schools. Obviously there's been too many shootings in this country. One is too many. Yes. What can be done to make sure that students and staff are safe inside the classroom? Yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely school safety issues. I 
uh, talked to a superintendent and I said to him, okay, I'm, I'm ready to take down my legislative notes here. Um, what do you want me to do when you know I get to the state legislature? What's good for schools? What's good for the students? And he said, well, I used to lay awake at night worrying about making budget, you know, and then I, you know, certainly worried about the workforce shortage, the teacher shortage, and he said, and lately when we see shootings, you know, across the United States, I really worry about school safety. And the part that makes him sad, not so much, you know, the, you know, it's the active shooter drills that really make him sad. And it's the sadness around locking up the school and not making it a place where the community gathers. You know, when we had schools that were open, a lot of activities were going on, people were going in and out. It's just not that way anymore. You know, you really have to, you know, keep kids safe in school. So I am a firm believer of the Second Amendment. I grew up around guns. My dad had guns, he hunted, and we had pheasant hunters on our farm, you know, on occasion. Um, I know that people buy guns to, you know, protect themselves, to stay safe. And that's okay. You know, we're, they're within the law. Uh, I agree that, you know, people trade guns and they collect guns, and I get that. But what we need to do is keep guns away from criminals, people who want to do bad things or people who want to harm themselves. And so universal background checks are what we need to do along with red flag laws. Ashley Hinson had an opportunity to vote on universal background checks and said no. It was a bill that Joni Ernst, who is in the military and carries, she agreed with that bill. So she voted no on that. So coming back around, uh, school safety is an essential element of learning. We've just got to you know, tighten it up and make sure that it's there for every child. We protect every child. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get your response on some of the criticism that's out there, particularly some of the advertisements that people are seeing on TV. Yeah. I know one specifically calls you a Pelosi puppet. One says that you're too liberal for Iowa. What's your response to that? Well, I say to them, my name is Liz Mathis. That's my name. You know, you may listen to a lot of alliterations out there, but my name is Liz Mathis, and I'm going to do a great job for you because I am going to Washington to reduce costs for families. I'm going to Washington to protect Medicare and Social Security. And I'm going to Washington to protect reproductive rights for women. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, and I know another piece of criticism that's out there says you want to defund the police. I want to get your take on kind of what your stance is when it comes to law enforcement. Oh yeah, I approve law enforcement totally. I was in the state senate for 10 years and every time that uh, you know um, an opportunity came up to uh, fund either state troopers, either their salaries or to make sure that we had more on the road, to make sure that our prison system had enough guards there, um, to make sure that narcotic officers were out on the streets and they were catching the people that they needed to catch, you know, the drug dealers, that they had the tools and the money to be able to do that. So there's, you know, there's training that we pay for, um, there is training around even uh, diversity and equity, and I favor that a lot because the better you are, you know, on, on your route that you're going, if you're a deputy or, you know, around the city, um, the better police officer you are, the better the community is. Yeah, and I know I've asked you about several issues, but I'd like to know from you what you believe are the most critical issues to Iowans right now. Yeah, I think definitely inflation in the economy. You know, a lot, it just hits everybody. You know, we want to make sure that um, we are getting those prices lowered. Um, and that means that price gouging bill was a terrific example of getting gas prices down to make sure that you can fuel up your car or fuel up an Amazon truck or fuel up a utility truck and you can do your job. You can deliver services. We also saw that service delivery, you know, the, the chain, the supply chain was it's also affected because of gas prices. It takes gas to get to deliver something. The ports were clogged up. We saw the administration try to unclog the ports. And all of that is going to help collectively. We just came out of COVID. None of us had ever experienced something like that. There is global inflation. And Russia invaded Ukraine, which really disrupted markets all across the United States. So um, I'm not asking people to be patient because it's hard to be patient when their groceries cost more and their gas does. 
but just know that I will go to Washington and I will try to work on this. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that voters can keep in mind as they head to the polls next month? Just that I'd love for them to vote for me and um, the voting is on November 8th and early voting starts on October 19th. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Mark. Great, thank you so much.